In an X-ray tube, a helical filament is placed in a rectangular slot. This rectangular slot is kept at negative potential than the filament. This negative rectangular slot will focus electrons to a rectangular spot on the surface of anode disc or X-ray target. This area of electron bombardment is called X-ray focal spot. Both heat and X-rays are produced from this area. We can say focal spot is our source of X-rays. Suppose we have applied a tube current of 50 MA. Let there be a temperature rise of 3000 degrees Celsius at this focal spot due to electron bombardment. Tungsten has a melting point of 3360 degrees centigrade. So our target won't melt at this temperature of 3000 degrees. If the focal spot size is increased by spreading same number of electrons to hit on a larger area, the temperature rise will be lesser as the heat generated will be distributed over a larger area. Let the temperature at this increased focal spot be 2000 degrees centigrade. But our target can tolerate safely a temperature of 3000 degrees centigrade without melting. So this allows us to increase number of electrons hitting X-ray target by increasing tube current or MA. Say if we increase our tube current to 90 MA, temperature rise of 3000 degrees at focal spot. So, what we learned, if one increases focal spot area, it allows to increase tube current safely, without melting of, X-ray target. And the increase in tube current or electrons, hitting an, X-ray target will, lead to increase in X-rays, produced per unit time. That is, we are increasing exposure rate. With increased X-ray production rate or exposure rate, our radiograph can be taken in, shorter time. Shorter exposure time means lesser organ or patient motion during radiograph. So, we are ultimately, reducing motion unsharpness in an, image by, increasing, focal spot size. This is a clear advantage of, increasing focal spot size, but, it comes with a, disadvantage too. Let's discuss the, disadvantage. Taking an X-ray is like, having a light shadow, on an X-ray film. Here we have a source of light or X-ray focal spot. Two objects and their shadows. We can visualize two distinct shadows for either objects. Please notice, the changes in the shadows, while, size of the source or focal spot is being, increased. Both the shadows have now, spread and overlapped, to form a, single indifferentiable shadow. That means we have lost the ability to, resolve the shadows, or, the spatial resolution is, lost. So, increasing the focal spot size, has helped to, reduce motion unsharpness but, at the cost of spatial resolution. The solution to this problem is, the line focus principle. If one angulates the source or, focal spot, the shadows, will again become distinct. The spatial resolution is restored, just by angulating the source or, X-ray target. So, what really angulation does? With focal spot horizontal, the projected area onto the film is, same as actual area of focal spot. With anode angulated, the projected area on horizontal surface, or onto a film, decreases. This reduced, projected area is called, effective or, apparent focal spot. Spatial resolution depends on this, effective focal spot, rather than, actual focal spot at target. 
if we further increase angulation, the effective focal spot will reduce, towards a line, from a rectangular shape. That's why, it is known as, line focus technique. With line focus technique, focal spot size is, increased. An anode is, angulated. Increased focal spot size will allow to, increase, tube current. Increasing tube current will reduce, exposure time. Shorter exposure time will reduce, motion unsharpness. Angulating the anode, will result in, reduction of, effective focal spot size. Reduction of, effective focal spot size will, increase spatial resolution, which was lost due to increase of focal spot size. Shortening of effective focal spot, works only in the direction, of inclination. Say along the length of the, focal spot. It does not work, along the width of the focal spot. Effective focal spot, can be calculated for, known focal spot and anode angle. Anode or target angle is the angle between, the target surface and, X-ray beam central axis. Theta, is our anode angle. Sine, of theta, equals opposite, divided by hypotenuse. Effective focal length, divided by, actual focal length, equals sine of theta. Effective focal length, equals actual focal length multiplied by sine of, anode angle. As the anode angle decreases, to approach zero degree, the effective focal spot, gradually, becomes smaller and smaller. But, a small anode angle limits, the usable X-ray beam size. Please notice, the field edge distance from X-ray central axis, decreases with, anode angle. This is due to, anode heel effect. A small anode angle, 7 to 9 degree is desirable for, small field of view devices, such as some small fluoroscopy detectors. Larger anode angles, 12 to 15 degrees are necessary for, general radiographic imaging, to achieve sufficiently large field area coverage, at typical focal. Spot to detector distances, such as 100 centimeters. Please like, share, subscribe and keep, all notifications on for updates.